I just got back from Las Vegas where I attended the first ever collaborative science conference. This was a fundraiser for the Citizen Science Foundation. They are working to raise funds for the next lean mass hyper responder study headed by Dr. Matthew Budoff, Dave Feldman, Nick Norwitz, and many others. Today, I wanted to share with you a brief recap of all the amazing speakers and also share with you how you can support this groundbreaking research. This was the first annual collaborative science conference. There's no word on if there's going to be one next year, but I have to say it was so well organized, so well put together, and I really, really hope they have one next year. It was held at the Silverton Lodge in Las Vegas, Nevada, Friday, March 15th, and Saturday, March 16th, 2024. One of the great things about this conference was their tiered ticket pricing. You could get a ticket to this conference for as low as $25 for the entire weekend, and the tickets went all the way up to $1,000, so people of all means could attend. Like I said, this conference was a fundraiser for the next Lean Mass Hyper Responder Study, so your ticket was your donation towards that study. So less the credit card processing fees of like two or three percent, all of the proceeds from the ticket sales went directly into funding this important research. So the administrative costs and the actual costs of getting the space itself, that was covered completely by sponsors and every single one of the speakers paid to be there. I think that shows the enthusiasm and the excitement behind this study. And I think many of you in my audience are really excited to see the results as well. For those of you that are not acquainted with the Lean Mass Hyper Responder study, let me give you a brief recap of it. First off, a Lean Mass Hyper Responder, what is that? Well, this is a person that sees their LDL cholesterol numbers skyrocket when they're eating a ketogenic diet. But in addition to that, their triglycerides are very, very low and their HDL cholesterol is very, very high. That is the lean mass hyperresponder triad. And this phenomenon seems to be more related to BMI than your saturated fat intake. The first lean mass hyperresponder study is following 100 people that have been following the keto diet for an average of 4.7 years. They take lots of different scans, CACs, CCTAs, trying to see the plaque burden that is associated with a ketogenic diet, especially when these people have such high LDL cholesterol numbers, because we've been told so many times over the years that if you have high LDL, you're going to die from a heart attack. But is that really true? That is what this study is trying to determine. So the next step was taking these lean mass hyper responders and comparing them to a comparable group of people, similar ages, demographics, things like that, with the only difference being that they have lower LDL cholesterol numbers. They were able to find that data in a study called Miami Heart. And that one, they did CCTAs, they did CACs. The researchers were able to perfectly match 80 out of the 100 lean mass hyper responders to similar candidates in the Miami Heart study with the only difference between the two groups being their LDL cholesterol. I think the average for the lean mass hyper responder was like 272 for their LDL cholesterol. And for the people in Miami Heart, it was like in the low 100s. That study is ongoing, but so far the data is showing that there is no significant plaque burden in the ketogenic group. So the second study that we are trying to raise money for, that is going to be run in parallel with this original lean mass hyper responder study. The hope for this study is to have a 100 person control group and a 100 person lean mass hyper responder group. I've linked information about this study and a lot of fun videos on it in the description below so you can check it out if you wanna learn more. All right, let's move into the recap of the actual conference. Day one, we got registered and then the morning speakers included Michelle Hearn speaking about her wife's cancer diagnosis and how they're using a therapeutic ketogenic diet to address that. Next up was Dr. Jamie Seaman. She is a practicing gynecologist, and she talked a lot about women's metabolic health. Siobhan Huggins gave a talk about the use of exogenous ketones in the treatment of lipidemia. And then Amber O'Hearn rounded out the morning session. I was really impressed with Amber's talk and I was able to connect with her on day two in person. So that was really cool. She has a wealth of knowledge in the carnivore field, especially in the scientific literature. And I'm looking forward to speaking to her again in the near future. Maybe I'll do an interview with her here on the channel because she has really in-depth knowledge about the carnivore diet. In addition to those morning speakers, this conference allotted 15 to 20 minute speaking sessions for some citizen scientists out there so they could share their experiences and their experiments. I really liked that aspect of this conference because that's what each and every one of us is doing. You know, we're pulling different levers, we're making tweaks, we're testing our blood, we're doing all these scans. And it was really cool to hear these people's stories. I could see myself doing a presentation at this conference in the future. After a lunch of a meat lover's omelet and some bacon and sausage, we headed back into the conference and enjoyed presentations from Nick Norwitz, 
Two Crazy Ketos, Ben Bickman, and Dr. Matthew Budoff. As I mentioned, Dr. Budoff is the lead cardiologist on the original Lean Mass Hyper Responder study, so he went through that match analysis that he presented on December 8th. It was really great. I've linked that full video in the description below if you want to check that out. And that was the end of day one. Now, for people on the higher levels of donating per ticket, so I think 500 and up, there was a VIP dinner. And originally there was just going to be one, but then it was so popular that they ended up having three VIP dinner seatings. Amazing. People were super, super generous. I was able to attend the 5.30 to 7 p.m. seating on Friday, and it was awesome. Food was really good, and Dr. Budoff and Dave Feldman sat at my table, so I was able to learn so much from them over dinner. Day two started bright and early at 8 a.m. The very first speaker was Dr. William Cromwell. And then next, they had a lean mass hyper responder panel with Dr. Cromwell, Brett Shear, and Dr. Nadir Ali, and Dave Feldman moderated it. That was an hour and a half deep dive into cholesterol and lean mass hyper responders, and it was really interesting. After a short break, Dominic Diagostino shared his latest N of 1 experiments and biomarker tracking. He is always really fun to listen to. The next speaker's story was really awesome. His name was Matt Bazuki, a young man who has used a therapeutic ketogenic diet to heal from bipolar disorder. I've linked his family's foundation in the description below, along with their YouTube channel entitled Metabolic Mind, so that you can check out more about mental health and a therapeutic ketogenic diet. His story was truly amazing. Dr. Nadir Ali rounded out the morning session with a great talk about dopamine and how it fuels food addiction. I really liked Dr. Ali's presentation. It kind of reminded me of a tactic that I use for myself and that I always recommend to you guys as well after having a cheat meal, a high carb, sugary cheat meal. I always say, remember how that makes you feel mentally, physically, and kind of store that in your mental Rolodex so that you start to associate that meal, that food with how it makes you feel. And then that can be kind of a reinforcement to not eat that the next time. He talked a little bit about dopamine and the systems behind that and how all of that works. And it was really enlightening. For lunch, I did another meat lover's omelet because it was just so easy, simple with bacon and sausage, a carnivore's delight. And then the afternoon session was jam packed. The first speaker was Dr. David Diamond. I've recommended a lot of his videos in my blood work videos. He is a PhD researcher who is well-versed in the scientific literature. He talks a lot about the dangers of using LDL cholesterol as a biomarker for atherosclerosis and how unreliable it is. He thinks it's more likely to be clotting factors like fibrinogen that are causing heart disease. Brett Shear did a presentation on therapeutic ketogenic diets, especially pertaining to mental health. And Peter Ballerstead did an excellent presentation on regenerative agriculture and how important it is that human beings consume meat. The afternoon session closed with a presentation by Dr. Stephen Hussey about the biophysics of lipidology. I know that's a mouthful. This presentation built off of Diamond's presentation, and I learned something new about the fourth phase of water and the inner lining of our arteries. So your arteries. Now not just a tube that your blood runs through. It's got artery walls, and then after that is the glycocalyx. I'm probably butchering the way that's pronounced. I'll pop it up on the screen what it looks like. It kind of looks like a furry layer. That's just the way it's represented. And that protects the endothelium, the skin on the inside of your arteries from being damaged. And then after that is a layer of water. And that was really interesting to learn because I never really realized that there was more layers than just the epithelium ileal layers inside of the arteries. And, you know, when you're looking at damage to an artery, in order to get heart disease, you have to have damage to the artery first. And then the, um, you know, clotting factors come in. LDL cholesterol is a part of it. There's lots of different things that are a part of it. Coming in, you know, it's kind of like a firefighter to, to fix that hole in your arteries. But in order to even be able to do that in the first place, to damage the arteries, your glycocalyx needs to be damaged. That water layer needs to be damaged. And that can be caused by like oxidation or glycation, lots of different factors that can disturb those layers to even allow the damage to happen in the first place. So it was just kind of a more in-depth presentation. That wasn't specifically what the 
presentation was about, but that was the first time that I had seen anything about this glycocalyx. So that was really, really interesting. And it's kind of driving me in a direction of like, oh, okay, I just understand it better now. Dr. Ken Berry was the final speaker of the day, and he did a rallying call to the audience talking about how we are all revolutionaries in a way. There has never been scientific research that is so important that has been crowdfunded in this way. It helps to eliminate biases, and then you don't have to seek out funding from industry like big food or big pharma, which we know like to skew data in their favor. It's estimated that 50% of the medical research that's out there is fraudulent due to industry sponsorship, and that makes it really hard for real science to progress. That's the beautiful thing about the Citizen Science Foundation. It's taking funding from real people that have an investment in the results because it concerns us. For me personally, I've become a lean mass hyper responder as I've continued to lose weight on carnivore. My last LDL cholesterol was 263, but my triglycerides were under 60 and my HDL cholesterol was like 79. And recent data suggests that rising LDL cholesterol numbers are more related to your BMI than your saturated fat intake. But we really need to have these scientific studies around LDL cholesterol and ketogenic diets. That is what the lean mass hyper responder study is. Good, clean science. The conference ended with a surprise event, a special viewing of a documentary that Dave Feldman is currently filming about his lipid energy model and the lean mass hyper responder study. We got to watch eight minutes of it, and I'm so excited for this documentary. It should be coming out later this year, maybe early next year, and I really think you're going to love it. All in all, it was a wonderful conference, more than worth the price of admission. It was awesome to get to meet some of the, you know, shining lights and visionaries in this low carb space and get to talk to them and learn from them. And I'm really hoping they do this conference again next year because I think it's filling a much needed space in the low carb community, allowing regular people to learn the scientific end of a low carb diet and funding amazing research in the process. The Citizen Science Foundation was able to raise $56,000 from ticket sales alone from this conference, but it's estimated to cost at least $3,000 per test subject to conduct the next study. So if they're able to do a 200-person study, you know, 100 people in the control group, 100 people in the intervention group, that's going to cost at least $600,000. If you'd like to contribute to this study, which is very expensive to conduct, I have put a link at the very top of the description to the Citizen Science Foundation. If you scroll down the page a little bit, you're going to see a section where you can do a donation, $5, $10, $25, whatever you can donate to the Citizen Science Foundation to help support this important research. Plus, almost all of your money goes directly to funding this study. The Citizen Science Foundation has very, very, very low overhead. So just short the credit card processing fees, everything else is going straight into funding this research. Now, through the end of 2024, I'm pledging 10% of my Google AdSense profits to the Citizen Science Foundation. So just by watching my channel, you are helping to fund this important research. But if you would like to do a bit more, please consider donating. And with that, I really hope you enjoyed this recap. I have put links in the description to every one of the speakers so you can learn more if you'd like to. And I'm really hoping they're going to be releasing the video of each of the speakers. I'm assuming they will. They recorded the whole thing. But, you know, we'll see when that happens. I'll be sure to let you know if and when it does. But thanks again for watching. Head over to Citizen Science Foundation to get that donation in. And I will see you in the next one.